It doesn't look like much on camera, and you might think that it's only concentrated within that cloud of smoke, but no. I could feel the effects from this 12 feet away from the target, so just imagine how bad this would hurt if someone got hit in the chest with this. They're going to be jacked up for at least 30 minutes. What's going on everyone? This video idea was something I was on the fence about making for a while, but uh, with all of the political tension that's been going around lately, I thought it might be worth uploading. Let's say you're someone that wasn't brought up around firearms, never been to a shooting range, or maybe just aren't comfortable with the idea of owning a gun. All of those are valid reasons, and I won't be weighing the pros and cons for gun ownership here because this topic is most likely a one-time deal for me, but if you're watching this, chances are you're at least interested in some type of self-defense option. Of course, the most common items available would be pepper sprays and pocket knives, but besides being best suited for everyday carry, the downside is to be effective, the attacker needs to be within close range, and most people are not going to be able to resolve an issue like that under pressure, assuming the guy doesn't have a gun pointed at you. You could also use a pellet gun or crossbow, which would be a step in the right direction, but again, the drawbacks are obvious. Now, part of my home defense setup includes a 9mm handgun and a 12 gauge shotgun. You'll notice there is an empty space on the wall, and for a while I was thinking about mounting an AR-15 or something similar, but I kept putting it off because I really wasn't in the mood to buy another gun, ammo, or spend more time and money at the range just to fill that space. So I started thinking, why does everything have to be shoot to kill? What if something happens and the situation doesn't require a real gun? I was mostly interested in having the option to temporarily stop someone without killing them if possible. Not during a home invasion scenario, but for something that wouldn't require quick thinking. So that's when I decided my best option was to add a pepper ball gun. If this looks like a paintball gun, that's because it is. Well, technically they're called markers, but it makes for a better title. If you are not familiar with pepper balls, just think of them as powdered pepper spray inside a paintball shell. Compared to an actual firearm, what I like about the Tipman Stormer Elite is that there's hardly any learning curve because it's something just about anyone would be able to easily handle on their first try. It's relatively lightweight, quiet, has no recoil, and best of all, you don't need a background check to purchase. The entire body is a mix of high-impact composite plastic and rubber, and these same materials can be found in other firearms. Even the handle grip is textured rubber and feels great in the hand. The option to fold both the front and rear sights is available if you don't need them. The Picatinny rails are standard size, so you'll be able to add accessories, and the 6 position collapsible stock is a nice feature as well. Unless you're military or police, most states don't have restrictions shipping pepper balls to civilians, but some do. If your state is in the clear, then you shouldn't have any problems, but check on that before buying anything. Once you've decided on the air tank you want, the next issue is going to be getting it filled. Even if you have the right adapters and an air compressor, if it's not a high pressure system like 4500 PSI, you will not be able to fill the tank at home. Trust me, I tried. A scuba shop might be willing to help you, but your best bet is to contact your local paintball shop and have them fill it for a couple dollars. I'm going to test fire a few dozen rounds of 68 caliber paintballs using the hopper before switching to one of the 20 round magazines filled with pepper balls. It's a dual fed system, meaning you have the option to use a hopper or magazine, just not at the same time. I still don't have it calibrated so I couldn't tell you if it's shooting fast or slow, but then again, I don't think it will ever make it to the paintball field. Like I said earlier, if you have little to no experience shooting guns, I think this would be a great place to start if you have somewhere to work in some target practice or have neighbors that just don't care. On a side note, the paint can be washed off with a garden hose, so it's not like you're shooting house paint. At least not with these surfaces. I knew there was a reason I didn't trash those pieces of scrap tile years ago. Okay, it's time to turn it up. I took a whiff of this after opening the lid and instantly felt a burning sensation all the way down my nasal passage and throat. Now let's see how much of a spread we get with these. It doesn't look like much on camera and you might think that it's only concentrated within the cloud of powder, but no. I could feel the effects from this in the air 12 feet away from the target, so just imagine how bad this would be if someone were to get hit in the chest with one of these. 
they're going to be jacked up for at least 30 minutes. And I was outside, so it's going to be way more intense indoors. The active ingredient inside the shell is pava, which is supposed to be stronger than tear gas. All I know is that I would not want to be on the receiving end. Now, would this be my go-to weapon during a home invasion? No, I'm grabbing the 12 gauge. If it were a life or death situation and this is all I had, yes, I would use this. But only if I had an emergency plan in place and could lock myself into another room for about 30 minutes until the smoke clears or until the police showed up. But here's why I think this is the best non-lethal option for home self-defense. As long as you have the right size caliper for the marker, you can switch between paint, rubber, or pepper. All you need to do is fire a few pepper balls down the hallway or in the direction of the intruder, which could be enough to run them off on the spot. Unlike all other alternatives, this is the only weapon that could temporarily incapacitate someone without having to be in the same room. I'm going to keep mine stored tankless on the wall because I really don't like the idea of having air pressure throughout the marker and a magazine full of pepper balls inside the house until I'm ready to use it. As you might have noticed, this part of the home defense setup is organized from top to bottom based on the amount of damage inflicted. Starting with Jack You Up, then Severely Injure or Kill, and last, Mr. Instakill. I do like the overall look and feel of the Tipman Stormer Elite, and most importantly, having a non-lethal option in the collection. If you like the idea but want something more compact, there are handgun and flashlight sized pepper launchers and smaller markers available if you're interested in customizing your setup. Let me know in the comments if this narrowed the search for your home defense alternatives, and if you found this helpful, be sure to check out my product reviews and easy tutorials playlist for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.